Hello, welcome to Good Job, where we interview inspiring people from the music industry. We follow their journey from their very worst job to present day and find out what makes them them. <laughs> That terrifying roar was from Fabi and Hegel from Swiss folk metal band Elvete. I found that a very, very beautiful thing, actually, because it shows the power of music. It shows how much music is able to unite people and create some kind of a family, no matter what culture or country or whatever it is, you know. I came across Elvete when one of my patrons asked me to react to them on my channel and I just loved the mix of folk and metal, of soaring, clean vocals and screams. In this episode we talk about Celtic culture, about how history writes music and about how the current lineup of Elvete came about. So we start the podcast the same way every time. What has been your very worst job? I don't know if it can get any worse than being a musician, but... Aww. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. My worst job would have to be... I once worked in a call center, um, but not... I, my job was not to sell stuff, but to, um, you know, ask people questions on these uh, product surveys and stuff like that. That was ridiculous. How old were you? What point of your life was that? It was in the beginning uh, with all weighty. But I only did it for like half a year. What about you? My worst job was when I was like 13. I was working in a factory for like, I don't know, three weeks. It was just horrible. I just had to put on stickers for eight hours on some packages. <laughs> and oh, it, it, was, it was actually really bad. But because the people were not so nice there, so I, otherwise it could have been fun. But the people make the job, I would say. If you went back to that point in your life what would you say to yourself for me it was actually okay because i knew it's just for three weeks and then i yeah then i knew it's gonna finish and i will start a school so it was it was all right for me yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's the same for me you know mm -hmm. like uh, it was a temporary thing from the start so and you both oh. always knew you'd be doing music yeah yeah i always liked doing music especially like it started when I was maybe 12 then I really got into the singing and the techniques and everything and then it was about like me switching to the different schools when I was 15 so I was like okay when I go to this school then what what am I gonna be uh, afterwards right so I was like okay I really have to go to this school because I think I want to do something with music maybe go study music if mm -hmm. possible so I think with 15, I was really like sitting down and thinking, okay, what is my way going to be? So what do I have to choose so I get there? Yeah. yeah. So around 15 for me. But not, I, I didn't think I would become a singer in a band. I was more like, yeah, becoming a teacher or a choir leader or conductor or something like that. I never okay. thought that I would actually end up in a band. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And was this your first music industry experience working with the band? Yeah, yeah, actually. Also, I mean, I was at, at school, so, but it, with the industry, yeah, kind of. I was just singing on weddings mostly, so mm -hmm. that's not really the industry, I would say. It's, I don't oh, know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm glad I ended up here. <laughs> glad to hear so. <laughs> and what about yourself? When did you think um, you wanted to do that? I, I think it was someone in kindergarten. When okay, I, wow. Um, yeah, like, it, it was tough. The last year of kindergarten was really fucking tough because, like, I needed to learn guitar. I wanted to uh, get an ed education in classical mm -hmm. guitar. And it drove my parents crazy for months until they got me a guitar. And then we found out that you're only allowed to start that education with six. So I, I had to wait, like, almost one full year, which was hell. And you started with instruments rather than voice. Yeah. 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 How did you learn to scream? I just love to scream at people. You just <laughs> no, no. I actually, um, when I when I formed the band like seventeen years ago, now like I was looking for a singer for forever, mm -hmm. and I just never could find one that you know like did what I had in mind. Um, but at the same time, we were already you know like writing songs and 
we were working on our second release already. So I recorded uh, the pre-productions at home mm -hmm. to, for everybody, you know. And so I did the vocals there. And at some point, you know, I, I mean, I just tried, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but at some point, like, uh, it was the other band members, actually. They, they came up with, like, you know, like, it, it's not that bad. Like, why don't you just sing? And you joined as a singer later on, didn't you? Yeah, I joined now almost three years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time flies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and what was that like for you, joining an already established band? Um, yeah, it was a big step. Um, it wasn't always so easy because I didn't really know what to expect or what, what will happen uh, and how will the fans react, how will like the band react to me and everything. <laughs> so, and I mean, I didn't really have so much experience uh, with concerts, especially with the, the big ones. And so, yeah, just got thrown into the cold water a little bit, but I like challenges and I don't know, I just had a good feeling about it. And yeah, yeah, just, just tried it, just did it. <laughs> and yeah. I guess it must be quite difficult putting your own stamp on things yet you have to kind of honor the original work as well so how do you find that mm. i just always just did it the way i would have done it also and how i did it just i didn't really think like uh, that i should copy the previous singer or something because there's i have my voice she has her voice so mm -hmm. what's the point in trying to copy her it will not be as good as the original so <laughs> uh yeah i just did it my way and yeah, I guess some people like it, some maybe don't. <laughs> yeah. And how yeah. did the fans receive it? Actually, I got a really warm welcome, of course. Um, you always have these these comments and I mean, it's re I, I, un I understand when when there was a singer for 10 years mm -hmm. in your favorite band and then they swap. It's 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 tough. Yeah. Uh, so I totally understand it. But they really uh, were very, very like warm to me and mm -hmm. yeah i feel now now as a part of the of the metal family no <laughs> that's so nice <laughs> and what about yourself how have you found going through lots of different iterations of the bands uh, i mean f for us it was you know basically just a development i mean we, mm -hmm. we had a lot of lineup changes mm -hmm. uh, especially in the first couple of years um and that was basically uh, how do you say? I mean, you know, like when I formed the band, it was clear what it all is about. It was clear mm -hmm. that that we want to work a lot, that we want to give everything and work as hard uh, to get as far as possible mm -hmm. with that kind of music. And so that's basically what we did. And so we were constantly growing um, as a band. But that's obviously also meant that there was more. Each year there was more shows. There was more of everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that also means that the time that you needed to invest into the band grew more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And so basically every couple of months, every band member had to ask him or herself, like, okay, is, can I still do this? Do mm -hmm. I still want to do this? And um, yeah, that that's basically why we had so many lineup changes in the first, let's say, five, six years. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, like every now and then mm -hmm. someone turned up and said like, okay, that's that's it. Like, I want to keep my regular job and, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. Um, and well, from the fans' perspective, I it's basically like, like Fobby just said, you know, like there's... Um, mostly our fans have always been uh, very supportive and also very curious, you know, like, you know, what, what, what the next version of LAT will bring. How did you start the band? It started as a recording project first, didn't it? Yeah, but yeah. Um, but it's not that I wanted it to be okay. like that. Uh, I, uh, you know, when I first tried to form a band like LAT, LVT, that was almost around eight years before I eventually founded LVT and it just never worked out. Like I, I formed a few bands in that period, but they, they always just ended up being pure folk bands or something like that. It, it, it just never worked because, you know, back in the day, this, this combination of two genres actually was not established mm -hmm. at all. There was no, there was no folk metal or something. There was no folk metal scene. And, uh, you know, the, how do you say, you know, 
the scenes were like really apart from each other. And mm -hmm. if you were in the metal scene asking around, like, you know, like, look, I want to form a metal band, uh, uh, but you know, with violins and bagpipes and flutes, like people looked at you uh, like, like if, if you're the biggest weirdo, you know, like, and it's the same for the folk musicians, you know, and once they heard actual metal, they were like, oh my God, they're screaming in there. What is this? You know? So uh, yeah, it, it it actually somehow just never worked out and uh, at some point i already gave up a couple of times but it just didn't it wouldn't let me go <laughs> but um it was probably like my last attempt uh and I, I just thought okay maybe it works as a studio project so i just wrote a couple of songs and recorded everything at, at home or programmed everything um and so then you know, like I just asked random people that I knew mm -hmm. and just gave them a CD. Look, this is the lines for your particular instrument. Learn that. And this and this day, you can come to the studio, record it, and leave it again. Mm -hmm. And that's it. There's no obligations to anyone. And that's actually how it worked. And uh, funnily enough, there, there was just one time all the people involved met each other oh, for yeah. the first time. And that was like for the band picture. Uh, that's the only time they they've even seen each other wow. that they, they didn't know each other so uh, this is how like i managed to to put out the first elevator release um but yeah like as i said it's not that i wanted it to be that it just mm -hmm. wasn't possible but after that like uh, that first release got um, like really great reviews everywhere and got sold out quickly and mm -hmm. so at, at that point it, it was easier then you know like i had to f you know like we started getting a uh, live request, you know, for live shows and the, all that. So I, I kind of was at the point where I said, okay, maybe you should become a band. Now. <laughs> Otherwise mm -hmm. it's hard to play live shows, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to find new people. I asked all the involved people and some of them said, okay, yeah, actually that could be fun. Let's do that. Um, but most of them were like, no, 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 <laughs> don't want to do that. So I had to find new people. Um, but at that point it was easier already because a i could show them look this is how it sounds and b i could show them the reactions and show them look it's not a completely crazy idea and in terms of the celtic side of it in the uk we always think of celtic being scottish or irish and you don't really think of switzerland but it is it's a real cultural thing in switzerland as well isn't it yeah it is. so does that does the celtic side come from your background did you grow up with folk music and that's how you find that side? Yeah, I did grow up with uh, folk music, but you know, like that was just like in my, you know, early age <laughs> when I was a little kid, and uh, like I kind of left folk, the folk music for a couple of years, like mm -hmm. and just came back to it when I was a teenager, and that's also like when I, when I started learning bagpipes and all that kind of instruments. Um, but yeah, like uh, and but the whole Celtic thing that just always kind of was a part of my life and. At least, I, I don't know how it was like 10, 20 years later, but when I went to school, uh, you know, at some point you you got like this history classes and you learned the history of your own country mm -hmm. and all that. And at least when I went to school back then, like, you know, they taught you like all the stories about the ancient Helvetians and all that. So mm -hmm. like, it's it was, you know, I kind of grew up with it. And tell me about the name of the bands. What does it mean? Literally translated, it means I, the Helvetian. I don't know. If you know what the Hill Legion is, okay. Nope. They were the first Celtic tribe that uh, got in trouble with the Roman Empire before mm -hmm. you know the Gallic Wars started and lasted for almost ten years. And um, yeah, and they, they were the tribe that basically in, inherited the country we live in. And it's still actually Helvetia is also still kind of an old fashioned name for a country. I mean, if if you visit the Swiss website, for instance, mm -hmm. the extension is .ch, which stands for Confederation of Helvetia. And it's the same for the car signs and everything. So it's uh, okay. it, it's it's still kind of a news that name. And oh yeah, and the name Elveti uh, literally translated um, means I the Helvetian, but it was basically a family name back in the day. You know, like we still have these kind of eponymous names today. Like thinking of I don't know uh, Albert Schweitzer, for instance, or mm -hmm. François Hollande. You know, like it, it's like country names, but also being used as a family name. Mm. That's basically what it was. And you use a lot of Gaulish language. How does that affect your singing? 
it is very different um, than sing when than when I sing in English. Somehow, I think my voice sounds different. I think it sounds like brighter. I don't know, mm. uh, but maybe it's also because when we sing in Gaulish, it's more the folky touch, mm -hmm. and when I sing in English, maybe then I try more a bit the, like the harder pop singing. So maybe this affects it language-wise as well. But the vowels are like very. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of open vowels. A lot of open vowels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's actually very nice to sing. I. I I really like it. So write more of these songs for me. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most difficult Gaulish phrase that you have to sing? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. I I don't think it's actually that that hard to to uh, speak it mm -hmm. because we speak Swiss German, so it's kind of close. It's quite similar. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you would be French and then you would need to learn it, it's going to be really hard, right? Or English. Or probably, English as well. Even hard, yeah. Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah. So, yes. so I was kind of privileged to be Swiss and learn it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I just went with the flow, and he he helped me. He he knows a lot. He's like the living yeah, Mexican. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He knows about the language. So it's, it was just we went through the lyrics, and because it's it's not really always pronunciated how you actually write it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, an X is a. Ch and stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, but we have the <laughs> in Swiss German, so for yeah. us this is easy. To be fair, I, uh, what happened in the last 15 years, in my opinion, is like super, super exciting. Uh, you know, like, I, I remember like when I started off with LVT, hardly anyone even knew what Gaulish is, you know, mm. and this changed so much. Like there's, like also, uh, you know, in, in science, I, I think the, the whole uh, uh, Celtic research is branched as crew. And um, yeah, today like the the internet is literally buzzing. Like there's there's Gaulish YouTube channels, there's is there? Gaulish amazing. Gaulish Facebook groups, and and so on. And and actually, um, a friend of mine, like the one of the scientists I work with most for our lyrics, mm -hmm. he just recently uh, uh, released his first published his first book, mm -hmm. which is basically a, a Gaulish course. Amazing. Can, yeah, this is amazing, yeah. It is amazing to see languages like that come back. And yeah, it, yeah. in the UK, we have so many different languages that are being lost. So it's so nice to see the kind of opposite happening here. Yeah, we're, we're working on it. Wow. So our quick fire round. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Tea. Ah. Mm. Music or lyrics? Music. Oh, Music. Hard one for you. Mm. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Dogs. Ah. You're after my heart. Oh. <laughs> Creativity or logic? Creativity, of course. Yeah. Has to be, doesn't it? Um, plane or train? Train. Train. Beer or wine? Wine. Nothing. Sweet treats or savoury snacks? Savoury snacks. Sweets. City or countryside? Countryside. Yes. Matching or odd socks? Odd socks. Yeah. Guitar or piano? Guitar. Piano. Friday night in or Friday night out? Probably in. In is in, in the house, yeah, yeah. like chilling out. Yeah, or yeah. going out partying. No, in the, at the moment in, yeah. Modern or vintage? Vintage. Yeah. Black and white or technicolor? Black and white. Color, full. Moose or mouse? Uh, it was moose. Yeah. yeah. Moose, of course. A moose. Oh, yeah. As a moose? Like a moose? Yeah, yeah, moose. Moose. <laughs> moose. <laughs> hey, this is the part of the episode where I give you a fun fact about our guests. Elvete uses a lot of traditional folk instruments like fiddles, tin whistles, bagpipes, and my new favourite, the hurdy gurdy. The hurdy gurdy is a stringed instrument that produces sound by hand cranking a rosined wheel, and this wheel then rubs against the strings and produces a sound much like like a violin bow. Single notes played on the instrument sounds much like a violin, but it also produces a drone note accompanying the melody much like a bagpipe. And for this reason, it's often used in Celtic music alongside the bagpipes or instead of a bagpipe. However, the hurdy-gurdy's origins are actually not in Celtic music. They have a long history starting in Constantinople or Istanbul. Wow. 
So I looked on the Nuclear Blast website and you are down as the most successful metal band from Switzerland. How do you feel about that? I mean, life has so many wave, ways to keep your feet on the ground and also to keep you busy that I really think if you have time to think about you being famous or some bullshit like that, mm -hmm. it must be the God's way to tell you that you have too much time. Yeah. <laughs> do you believe in kind of like fate or hard work and choice? What do you think? Or like a destiny to do music? Personally, I think it's always a combination of both, actually. Okay. And it's probably some higher connection kind of thing that we just basically don't understand. But to my simple mind, it looks like, a, you know, like being both. And you're, as I said, very successful and very popular. Why do you think that people, people connect to the music? For me, when I first heard it, it was... Uh, almost like film music to me. And I really saw these rough landscapes uh, from valleys, from the Alps. There's a special area. I really see these these landscapes. The Al or Alpine region. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or also like I can see Scotland in front of me or something mm -hmm. like this. Just these sceneries. And I just connected to this. And I also just loved... Um, for me, of course, I, I really... Dive uh, went into the, the the female singing songs to check it out, and I just really loved how sh how she sings and the melodies and like what she can do like range wise and everything. I was like totally fascinated by it. So mm. yeah, uh, but I think it's like this connection to the nature and and the the stories that that he is writing about and uh, yeah, just the the subject itself. It's for for me and i guess for many people is i, I guess is, yeah like I, I mean it it comes with a package I, I don't think that i i'm adding much to it but uh it's you know if you look at it folk music is basically the oldest kind of music the only oldest genre there is and it just doesn't show the decency to fucking die it just keeps on <laughs> existing right i think you know folk music has always kind of been simple people and the poor, also the poor people's music, you know, depending on the era you're looking at. And, and it just, you know, like it's, it, it keeps on living. Uh, it just keeps on being given from generation to generation and it changes with each generation, but it, it never loses its soul, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think the reason it does that is that there's something very, primal in it and it there's something that just talks to our hearts no matter who we are yeah. and I, I think it has something to do with that so you guys are touring right now you're going from country to country as well on this tour how has that been what's the best and worst thing about touring i think when we have flying tours for me the worst is um the lack of sleep and overall maybe it's the worst for me, like the air condition, for example, uh, Ooh, yeah. especially in the US is crazy for, for the voice yeah, yeah. or just also in the tour bus, sometimes the air and, you know, always just like trying to not get sick. <laughs> this yeah. is maybe kind of, especially for singers, probably yeah. it's kind of, for me, it's like a little bit stressy sometimes. Like, mm. oh, I have to take care. Oh. So I think this is maybe a bit the bad side of the touring like mm -hmm. the worst uh, and the lack of proper toilets and showers oh yeah, yeah that's true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah true depends on the venue though sometimes it's super nice yeah yeah, yeah. But, but, uh, but the thing is you just fully depend on the venue so i mean yeah. you, have, you, you know like if you have like a, a job in an office then you you have you have your own bathroom and you can keep it as clean as you want to and, mm. and every day you return back there and life is good <laughs> And, but we just depend on, you know, we don't know, like maybe the people that run the venue are nice and think of the musicians and keep their toilets clean and nice. And, but most of the time they don't. Yeah. But there are also good sides. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Basically everything else. Yeah. Yeah. We're just following our passion, which is awesome. Yeah. One of my patrons, her question was, how does it go down in different countries? Do you find different countries receive it better than others, the style of music? 
actually, uh, I've, been, I've been asked this question many times, like also like, where is the best audience and stuff like that? And like after touring, like for almost 15 years now, like I, I really have to say that in the end, metalheads are just metalheads, you know? I mean, <laughs> we, we, we've seen like really different parts. We've played in fucking whatever, India, Bangladesh, uh, mm -hmm. Japan, and South America, what the hell ever, even South Africa actually. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like if you go to these countries, you get like Bangladesh, for instance, it was a fucking cultural shock, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but at the end of the day, the metalheads are just metalheads. You know, if you're on stage and looking at the audience, the differences are not, not that big. And I, I found that a very, very beautiful thing, actually, because it shows the power of music. It shows how much music is able to unite people and create some kind of a family, no matter what culture or country or whatever it is, you know. Mm. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Could you describe your music making method? What sort of M's in that? Who writes the music? Where does it start? Yeah, well, could you use the master brain? Mm -hmm. master, I, th I think history writes music. I mean, the first thing we do when we start working on a new album is that I kind of like create a concept of the whole album. I mm -hmm. need to have like the, the final album in front of my inner eye, including the artwork, including the lyrics, including I know exactly what it all is about and mm -hmm. what the lyrics say and everything before we actually start writing the music. Because mm -hmm. also to us, it's super important that our songs also musically express what the lyrics are about. We, we're not just like composing random songs and then add random lyrics to it at some point. But, you know, to, to us, like an album is like a, a piece of art that includes everything that includes the visuals the artwork the lyrics and mm. and the music and, and and i i put as much attention to the lyrics to, then as to the music for instance and so yeah that's what i meant L you know like our lyrics are it's all about celtic culture and, and history and um and due to what i just said it's you know it's basically to to the very my place it's the lyrics that actually form the music kind of and and also, like, you know, when we were in the studio working at Blackwater Dawn or something, I, I think our, our songs are, are a little bit like kids, you know. They they just grow with time. And, and, you know, the older they get, they actually point down what they want. They, mm -hmm. they kind of develop their own will and, you know, point out that they need, okay, they're little more of Fabi's voice. There needs a little bit more whistle or what, what the hell ever. So mm -hmm. they just, like grow like organically and naturally that's how, how i would describe it do you find different members contribute new things or is it mostly your writing no it's not and this has changed a lot in the last couple of years and mm -hmm. um, you know when when we were in the studio a couple of years back recording the, the last acoustic album uh we've been like in this very i would say creative phase in our career and um, we've been working more together as a, as a band as a group of musicians than we ever did before uh, on that record and uh, also we left a lot of things open when we went to the studio mm -hmm. a lot of things just happened spontaneously and and also like almost the whole production almost all the band was there like like also people that that they weren't recording at the time they were just still there just to be there, you know, or mm -hmm. to, to cook for everybody else or something like that. And so, yeah, there was just like this really creative and also familial atmosphere, I would say. And and for the our last album, that tendency just even grew more, I would say. So it was great what happened, mm -hmm. you know. So it was a proper collaboration in that sense. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, that was great. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained one ability or one quality what would it be Oof. I, I i wouldn't want that <laughs> yeah cool you're like happy happy as you are it, it would probably just change who i am and that would feel like unreal so i mean i like a lot a lot of things you know mm -hmm. and but th that makes me who i am and uh, it probably would be weird the other way around i guess mm -hmm. i don't know what about you Oh God, it's hard to choose so much. Um, 
Come on, you, you, I'm, you would like to freeze everything like Elsa, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It. <laughs> and if you had one piece of, of advice for people trying to enter the music industry, what would it be? Don't listen to advice. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Now I cannot say anything, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> advice, yeah. I mean, I can just speak what what it was for me. I was like, okay, I take the challenge. And and mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm, if if I would have said no, then I wouldn't be here now with him. So, yeah. but it's not really an advice. It's just how it was for me. Go for so, it. Yeah. All right. There we go. We're done. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you to Fabi and Friegel. If you'd like to find out more about Elvete, head over to their website, which is elvete.ch. And you can also find all of their music on Spotify and YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, rate and review us on your podcast app of choice. It really helps us spread these stories to new people. If you'd like to send us feedback, send us an email at goodjobatbethroars.com. And if you'd like to support the podcast and get early access to episodes, head over to patreon.com slash bethroars. Once again, massive thanks to Fabi and Kriegel, to James and Kezra at One Fine Play for the initial edits, and to Tom Court, my co-producer, who's been working super hard in putting these together. And of course, to you guys for listening. See you in the next one. Bye. Good job. Bye.